Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Today we are looking at this thing here. This is a semi-acoustic guitar by Harley Benton, the HB35. And the most astounding thing about this guitar is that it costs roughly the same as this kitchen bin that you can buy from Argos. Who spends £140 on a bin for the kitchen? You know, who decides that, uh, oh yeah, that thing in the kitchen where I'm going to be throwing uh, the used tea bags and the eggshells and that carrot that's been at the bottom of the fridge long enough to grow a beard. Hmm, I can't possibly spend any less than £140 on something uh, for, for that kind of use. I would much rather have a guitar personally so I had 140 quid burning a hole in my pocket and I trekked myself to this. This isn't a charity guitar, this hasn't been donated to Guitars for Good Causes or been bought with money uh, donated to that uh, campaign. This is um, mine and um, I decided to buy it basically because I didn't have any kind of semi-acoustic guitar. The one I really fancied uh, being a bit of a Telecaster addict was the, um, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's, again, it's a Harley Benton and it's a twin humbucker uh, Telecaster with um, like a thin line, semi-acoustic kind of vibe going on. I think you'll probably know the one I mean. It's got like a blue quilted maple top on it. looks absolutely gorgeous. But uh, for about the past six months, that guitar keeps uh, being listed as available within two to three weeks you know come on Tom and if it's not an item that you carry anymore say so don't just keep saying that it'll be there in a couple of weeks and then uh, it isn't anyway that's enough of that uh, onto this guitar we're going to look at um, all of the specifications of it and the fit and finish and all of that sort of stuff uh, but let's face it the main reason you've clicked on this video is because you want to hear how good a £140 uh, electric semi-acoustic guitar sounds. Well, it sounds like this. So I don't think that's too bad really, um, it does uh, what it's supposed to do, yes it is probably uh, worthy of a few upgrades and we'll talk about those shortly, um, but right now let's talk about what the specifications of this guitar are. Right then, what have we got here? Well, let's begin with the body. Uh, it is made from maple, most likely laminated maple with a mahogany sustain block running down the middle. Uh, the body also, as you would expect for this style of guitar, sports a pair of F-holes and they, much like the outside of the body and the neck for that matter, sport some rather attractive and well done cream binding. 
The glued in set neck is made from Canadian maple and it's topped off with a blackwood fretboard with a radius of 350 millimeters, which in all terms is about 13 and three quarter inches. Uh, we also get dot inlays and 22 frets, a scale length of 628 millimeters, or once again in old money, that is a standard Gibson 24 and three quarter inches. Nut width is 43 millimeters. We get a dual action truss rod, and the pickups are listed as two vintage style humbuckers. No mention of Alnico magnets being involved, so I think we can take it as read that they are ceramic pickups. Uh, a three-way pickup selector mounted on the upper horn uh, with the usual quartet of controls, two volume and two tone controls. We get a chrome tunematic bridge and stop tailpiece and chrome die-cast machine heads. That's all the information I've got on those, unfortunately. And the strings that this guitar comes fitted with, the listing says Harley Benton 10 to 46 gauge strings. Uh, no, if this is a set of 10 gauge strings on this guitar, then I'm a monkey's uncle. Uh, these are not 10 gauge strings uh, by any stretch of the imagination. They feel at least like a set of nines. Wouldn't surprise me if they were actually a set of eights. They're just really floppy and loose feeling, not at all like a set of 10 gauge strings. And as you can see, it's all rather attractively topped off in a very grand piano-like uh, black gloss finish. So there you go, those are the specs. And um, it's, you know, what you, you pay for what you get. There is a, a, a model above this, the HB35 Plus, which comes with the upgraded pickups, uh, Roswell Alnico 5 pickups. And I almost got one of those, uh, but I ended up kind of thinking, well, I might as well get this one. And this is the reason why. Um, those Roswell Alnico 5 pickups, they're a nice pickup if you like Alnico 5 pickups. But increasingly these days, I'm more and more um, loving the sound of Alnico 2 pickups. As you saw in, I don't know if you can see it here, but the, the uh, CST24 um, that I put uh, a set of Vance and Alnico 2 pickups in. And I'm loving the sound of that guitar. So I was thinking, well, why pay the extra for a set of pickups that I'm probably going to be taking out and, and swapping anyway. So that's probably the first thing I'm going to be doing with this. Um, I'll be putting uh, a set of Vance and Alnico 2 PAFs in it um, when I can be bothered, frankly. Uh, changing the pickups on this style of guitar is a monumental faff around. You've got to kind of basically do all the wiring and everything either through the pickup cavities or the f-holes and you you're kind of pulling wires through on the ends of bits of fishing line and it's a it's a pain in the bum quite honestly to do but um eventually i'll get around to doing it a more immediate um modification are going to be the tuners these tuners here there they are they're not good um harley benton guitars at the moment the tuners are either fantastic and feel really, really high-end and expensive, or they feel like these, cheap and almost like they're lubricated with gravel inside them. You know, that kind of glitchy uh, feel. I mean, the, you can get the guitar in tune, that isn't a, an issue, but um, it's just not a particularly pleasant or confidence-inspiring experience uh, when you're tuning the guitar. And given the fact that you can get a set of, uh, again, Vanson tuners for about 15 quid, it just seems a no-brainer to uh, put a new set of tuners on. As I mentioned in the spec video, uh, this guitar is listed that uh, it comes with 10 to 46 gauge strings on it. Certainly on this guitar, they weren't a set of 10s. I've since put a set of 10s on, and it now feels like a set of 10 gauge strings should feel um so yeah uh, what else can i tell you about the uh, the way this guitar arrived well um the setup wasn't great it wasn't awful it was playable out the box but um i keep saying this about harley benton guitars all of the good stuff all of the important stuff was done well um the nut perfectly cut i have never had a harley benton guitar with a badly cut nut 
and this is no exception. The frets do feel a little bit rough and that's a good thing and I'll explain why. Okay, why do they feel rough? Because they've got filing marks in them. Now, uh, frets don't get filing marks in them unless they've been levelled and crowned. And all that's happened is whoever's done the, the levelling and the crowning basically hasn't really bothered with uh, the final stage of the process, which is to polish them back up to a shine. But that's an easy job to do. Uh, I use um, a set of fret erasers from uh, Crimson custom guitars and they're brilliant for restoring uh, a shine to any set of frets so I did that when I uh, when I put the um, the new strings on. Uh, the fretboard this blackwood fretboard was very very dry when it arrived uh, but a little dose of Dr. Da Dr. Duck's Axe Wax and String Lube soon brought it back to life and made it made it feel a lot more pleasant. There is no fret sprout along the edge of the fingerboard. Um, the, the frets are very, very well finished in that regard. And it's a very comfortable neck to play on. Um, as I've said in previous videos, I'm not really a, a, a Gibson aficionado. So I couldn't really tell you whether this is, you know, what year of Gibson 335 this neck evokes, but it just feels comfortable. Chunky and substantial, but not. it doesn't feel like you're holding a telegraph pole in your hands. Um, the action on the guitar when it came was um, on the high side of medium. Uh, but again, I was confident that the frets had been leveled and I went over them with a fret rocker and there isn't a high fret anywhere on this guitar. Uh, so looking down the neck, uh, there was quite a bit of um you know kind of concave bow in the neck so um a, a good old tweak of the truss rod soon sorted that out lowered the bridge down a little bit intonation is pretty much spot on um well it was for the, the what is obviously a set of nines that were on the on the guitar when it arrived i suspect it's shifted since i've put a set of tens on and that will be uh, the next job on my list to do so there you go that is the harley benton hb 35 a semi-acoustic uh, ES335 copy that costs the same as a kitchen bin from Argos and uh, I know which I'd rather have so uh, that's pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and I will round off by saying as I always do that if you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition then get in touch with me via the details at the end of the video if you live on Teesside in the northeast of England you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson in this very room or if you are anywhere else in the world, then you can have a lesson via Skype and whichever way you do it, your first lesson is free. So you've got nothing to lose and potentially everything to gain. And with that, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend and there'll be another video coming next week. If you've enjoyed the video, hit like, subscribe, notification bell, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now, folks.